and it says this. Parents, please stop sending your kids to school with the idea someone hits you, you hit them back. You are a part of the problem. And I thought, what an interesting topic to go into deep conversation about uh, with this. Again, let me read it one more time. So, parents, please stop sending your kids to school with the idea someone hits you, you hit them back, you are a part of the problem. Okay, well, let's dissect this. <laughs> I think, uh, one, I completely disagree with this in yeah. every facet of the world. <laughs> I disagree with this I, more than than you can honestly possibly imagine. Let's um, teach our kids to not stand up for imagine. themselves. Imagine. I, I disagree with this on every facet of every level of everything. Um, full transparency before I dissect this. I teach my children, you better not ever start a fight, but... If somebody wants to start something, you better finish it. And two, if you ever see somebody bullying or beating down somebody else, if I find out that you didn't step in to stop it, we going to have problems. I, like, like, like that is full transparency, what I teach my children. Because that's what I believe. I do. That's what I believe. Um, full, full example of how this translates to real life. Um, I saw a video, it was a dash cam footage of a police officer, a female police officer. She was attempting to handcuff a guy. I guess it looked like he either was like drunk driving or something like that. And she ends up getting a scuffle with this guy. No punches were thrown, no nothing. But I mean, it's a legitimate scuffle, blah, blah, blah. And it's on the street and this truck sees it. It's a grown dude. He sees it. He literally like just uh, like gets in there. He gets out of his truck and he spears this dude. Like, I mean, straight down to the ground to help this police officer. And then right after that, another dude comes in and literally like lays down on this dude's face to like get this dude down so the cop can handcuff the guy. Um, under this person's mentality, we would teach people to become adults that would just keep driving. Yeah. Right. That, that, that would just keep driving. Um, I would say that there are so many problems to this on so many ways. First of all, before I go into this further, I want to talk about this article that I also saw that I think goes into this. Okay. And the title of the argument is what happened to real men and are there any left? Well, Without even reading the article, one of the takeaways from it was men should be strong enough to kill and gentle enough to hold a sleeping baby. Joe Rogan even had a very viral post one day where he talked about the fact of um, we want men to be weak when what we actually need are freaking monsters that know how to control being a monster. I like the way Victor Mark puts it, a dangerous gentleman. A dangerous gentleman. Well, Joe Rogan, yes, exactly. Joe Rogan also goes on to say, you know, you want a monster that can be a farmer, right? Mm -hmm. But a farmer can't be a monster when bad things actually happen. And that's why you always want the beast, the lion, the 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 roar that, that you know, that, that, that can become compassionate. I thought this article did a very good thing. It said men should be strong enough to kill and gentle enough to hold a sleeping baby. What has happened to real men? Now, I know that women get in fights or girls get in fights at school, but this post is generally directed towards boys. I think that's a pretty safe assumption, right? Well, I would say that this type of ideal in a parent would be part of that leading to where has men gone. Now, that article has a lot of extra stuff in it that I'm not going to get into because, like I said, we're focusing on this right now. The accusatory that a parent that teaches their kid, if someone hits you, you hit them back, saying that they're a part of the problem, I would argue that's not the case at all. I would argue that the kid that hits in the first place, their parents are the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. The parents that are teaching their kids to fight back are actually the solution 
to the actual problem. See, if you've got a bully in real life, you don't just let the bully keep beating you up or beating other people up because then they just are forever a bully. They never learn their lessons. They never figure out what's going on. Hurt people hurt people. This is known. We know this in psychology. We know this in DSM-5 or whatever it is that psychiatrists and social workers use, all of the above. Most of the time, kids that abuse or are physically abusive, verbally abusive, or bullies to other kids, they're, all that stuff is happening to them by somebody at home. Older sibling, mom, dad, something, right? Like, I mean, it's just the way it is. Sometimes people are just Michael Myers. I understand that. But 99% of the time, it's from something like that. But if you don't have somebody that in turn it introduces what I like to call uh, <laughs> the vaccine <laughs> to, 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 the, to, the, to the symptom or the sickness or whatever, it ain't never going to be cured, right? Because what happens nine times out of ten when you stand up to a bully? Zach? They stop. They stop because they only do it because you keep letting it happen. Right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and where in the world did this idea, and especially within Christians, come from that Christians are supposed to be weak? Right? So, so we confuse what the Bible says about meekness and gentleness with cowardice and weakness. There ain't no place in the Bible ever that says that we're just supposed to let somebody beat us up. <laughs> like, like, that ain't in there. Like, it's not. It's not in there. Now, there's some things about self-defense, talking about if somebody comes into your house in the middle of the night and you deliver a fatal blow, you're not to be blamed. We're not talking about killing somebody. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like, that's an awful thing there. But I did screenshot this one thing because this is what everybody wants to turn to. It's Matthew 5, 39. And everybody says, Jesus commands us to turn the other cheek. This is what everybody wants to That's what everybody wants to talk about. If somebody punches you right in the face, you turn that cheek and let him punch the other side of your face. What? That's not what it's talking about at all. This has to do with personal slights and offenses. It's not actually talking about physical altercations (laughs) that are going on. This is talking about like if somebody wrongs you, (laughs) you know, like you shouldn't seek an eye for an eye for that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like they're in a place in the bottom. No, 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 no. (laughs) That is not, that is not, this is, excuse me. That is not the way the Bible meant it to be. And it is parents like this person that I believe that are the actual problem. Because like everything else in our society, we are teaching or wanting or expecting parents to teach children behavior that allows, enables, and accepts and tolerates bad behavior from other people. And that is the actual problem. 